Traveling is like um, escaping. It's like you just want to escape yourself or you just want to, to discover, to search for something which might not be existing or that you might um, want to find. You're searching for, yeah, you might search for yourself. In the distance, things are very small. You can hardly perceive them. It's like a dot coming towards you, maybe. And I think the distance is about desire and about walking. Walking is slowing down time. And that's something very important for me. To slow down time that you can actually start seeing things. You know, observe very clearly. And things become more defined. And walking is a, is a way to, to do that. The night is the moment you take the road and you travel with your mind and you let everything come to you. It's like, a, you know, those are the moments where you dream, when you, when you think. I'm South American now. <laughs> and I grew up in Africa. Ethiopia, Chad and okay. Algeria. I've been to Colombia before. It obviously has a very dark past. And uh, I've photographed in the hills of Usma, in the outskirts of Bogota right after Carnival. And I also visited Medellin, and I um, very well remember meeting uh, Paolo, a former child soldier, living in this very small room without any belongings. No one actually knew anything about his past, his history. And uh, Paolo one day escaped. He heard music in the hills, and he just ran away until he reached a shelter. I guess travel is like a route, so a lot of things happening. You stop, you take a look. <laughs> One doesn't sleep, I don't sleep, I hardly sleep. Sometimes I think it's a waste of time. Um, I don't have time enough for my daily life, so yeah, I do not sleep. Just this one little detail sometimes that defines everything. It um, might just make life for the peace. As much as the detail is important in life, I believe that you don't need to see everything or you don't know, you don't have to know everything. Every face, there's a story. The past, the present, future. I mean, it's very interesting to look at faces because it is like a dictionary. It's, it's full of words. And in every wrinkle, there's a kind of sadness or happiness. It's the way people can look at you, or you can look at them. It can be desirable, it can be very seductive. It can be very sensual. I don't know. I love when people look at each other. I would put this one in between. Can you walk with me again, please? When you design a collection or, design or think about your work, you have those moments of silence and everything is passing in front of you and... Um, I know the problem, I understand the problem. It's certainly not all about beauty. It needs to intrigue me. There should be something disturbing. Because beauty can be disturbing. It's like what Pasolini used to say. He preferred not to make any movies anymore. Because in his fantasies, they were much more beautiful than in reality. And that's my romantic way of looking at things, to look back to the past. That actually embracing the future, as Colombia has quite a heavy past or a dark past, that was a way to look at things in a romantic way. I remember the view from the building where the show was. And everyone was 
enveloped in, in darkness, as if they were wound up in their own thoughts. And it was quite beautiful. I often love that women are coming out of the darkness. You see their shadows and you see their silhouette, and it's up to you as a voyeur or as an observer to define what you think or what you would like to think it to be. When you don't know everything, you can make it up your own story. It's like looking at a painting. I don't need to have any explanation. I just would like to have my own fantasy on it. We don't know where she's coming from and we don't know where she's going. You know, she's coming from somewhere and she's going there in the city to lose herself. When I'm in a bar at a concert, I would always look at the person who's in a corner who's the one who's the most silent and the observer. And I wish to be that person. <laughs>